So the next lecture is on projectile motion. This is section 1.5 in your textbook. And uh, when we talk about projectile motion, um, we're, we're talking about uh, when an object kind of moves through the air. So uh, any object that moves horizontally while experiencing a gravitational force will have a parabolically curved trajectory. And the object moving is considered a projectile. The motion of the object is what we call projectile motion. So here's an example with a motorcycle moving through the air, and this is uh, with a stop motion camera. So it takes a picture uh, after every um, uh, time interval here. And what you see is the motorcycle uh, rider in different positions. If you kind of graphed this and you kind of uh, uh, connected the curve of each of these locations, you'd see that it was a parabola. You probably learned this in uh, your grade 9, 10 math, um, but uh, now we're going to apply it a bit more. Now with projectile motion, um, one of the things that's interesting is that the, uh, the fall of an object vertically is independent to its horizontal velocity. So if we had two rubber balls and we threw one horizontally uh, and dropped another one at the same time, they would both hit the ground at the same time. So uh, they're the, the, I guess the additional uh, horizontal velocity of the thrown ball uh, has no effect on its vertical acceleration towards the ground. I have a short video to show you on that. So as you can see, um, that motion is independent. That vertical motion is independent of the initial horizontal velocity vector. So um, we have, when we're talking about two-dimensional uh, projectile motion problems, um, we uh, this is when we introduce the the horizontal mo motion. Um, and basically, what would happen is uh, uh, that horizontal motion is uniform. There's no acceleration in the horizontal direction. So the only formula we need to use is the velocity equals uh, the distance divided by the time, or displacement divided by time. So v equals dt over t. Vertically, the motion is non-uniform because we have an acceleration. And for this course, uh, uh, unless you're asked to use it otherwise, you can use 9.8 meters per second squared as your acceleration of gravity. Um, and uh, we can use these the um, the, the uniform accelerated motion problems, those big five um, equations for uniformly accelerated motion to do our calculations in the vertical dimension. Now even though um, the acceleration uh, or the fall of the object is independent, um, there is a common factor and that would be time. So the time it takes for something to fall vertically is the time that um, it's going to be experiencing that horizontal velocity uh, as well. So if you find time in, 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 the, um, in the vertical dimension, you'll find time in the horizontal dimension and vice versa. So this is a slide to copy down. You may want to pause to do that. Um, but in general, what we've kind of, we can summarize that for projectile motion problems, there are 2D problems. Um, because we don't have a projectile if it's moving up and down. Uh, the motion is hor that is horizontal has no acceleration, so we can use uh, the velocity in the x dimension is uh, equal to the displacement in x uh, divided by the time, and you don't really have to say time in x because, we, as we can see later on, it says that the time is common to both. Uh, the vertical motion is non-uniform, so we can use the five uniform acceleration formulas, and when we're Using, um, uh, we're doing gravity problems um, on uh, Earth. We can use 9.8 meters per second squared as a, an approximation of the acceleration due to gravity. So there's th three types of projectile motion problems. Um, the, the simplest one is kind of this idea of something moving uh, or having an initial horizontal velocity vector and it begins to fall. Um, so you can think of this as throwing something out of a window problem. So uh, in this case, um, so we have that vix, so the initial horizontal velocity. 
um, and we have our VIY at, that is zero. So it starts accelerating from zero and then it accelerates to a non-zero velocity. It's also, I see that note says that it's also very good to use down as positive and right as positive for a problem like this. So keep that in mind. Now here's a question. It says a beanbag is thrown from a window that is located 10 meters above the ground with an initial horizontal velocity of 3 meters per second. How long will it take the beanbag to reach the ground? So what is its time of flight? So for this problem, we can start by writing down the initial information. We know that uh, Vix is 3.0 meters per second, and we know that dy is 10.0 meters. Um, we're also going to know that the acceleration due to gravity, Ay, is equal to g, which we're going to use as 9.8 meters per second squared. So what is the time of flight? Um, this velocity in the x is uh, irrelevant to that right now. So what we can do is we need to create a, um, uh, use an equation where uh, we have the uh, distance and the acceleration. We know that VIY equals zero meters per second. And what we have to find is the T or the TY. So this is our unknown. Now, um, when I'm looking at the equations, the best one to use would be um, my displacement equals VIT plus AT squared over 2. This is 0, so that's going to be gone. The D is 10. For simplicity purposes, I'm just going to write it down as 10 instead of 10.0. I have 9.8 T squared over 2. So t equals the square root of 2 times 10 divided by 9.8. And when I resolve that, I get 1.4 seconds. I'm going to ground it to two significant digits. And like I said um, uh, earlier, the significant digits will be, uh, uh, we'll be covering significant digits uh, after the first quiz and test. For now, um, uh, use, use whatever uh, you've been taught in the previous year. Uh, in, grade, in grade 11 physics, um, but uh, I'll, I'll be more strict on that uh, later. So let's go back to our lecture and uh, we can see how we got that 1.4. The second part of this question says, how far will the beanbag travel horizontally? So what is its range? And to find the range, um, we know the time. So the time is 1.4 seconds. The VIX, which we didn't use previously, we will need to use now. And what we know is that um, uh, D equals VT. So the distance traveled, the displacement, is equal to velocity times time, because there is no acceleration in this question. Or rather, acceleration is 0. So we have 3 times 1.4, and this gets me to um, doesn't exactly get me to 4.3, so I'm going to explain why. Uh, what we, uh, when I wrote this 1.4 down here, I was using the rounded version. So this is a very important uh, thing to to uh, uh, to keep track of. The answer that we report um, has to have the significant digits. But if I'm going to use that answer in another calculation, I need to use the exact value. So rather than using 1.4 here, uh, what I actually have to do is use uh, 3 times the square root of 2, 10 over 9.8. What else? Another thing you can do is after you calculate this 1.4, you can um, save it in your calculator because this would be 1.3 something, and then we would end up having our, our more accurate answer. So to calculate this, uh, which was 1.42, so you don't have to necessarily write this down, but I'm going to write this down, 1.42857. Um, that value times 3 gets me to 4.2857. And when I round this, I round to 4.3 meters. 
That's my dx. So that's a very important thing to keep track of. And uh, I'll, I'll mention that uh, in further lectures. And when I talk about significant digits, um, I'll bring that up as well. So when I mentioned uh, there were three types of projectile motion problems, uh, we talked about the first one. That was the simplest one, where you have uh, horizontal motion only, um, and or sorry, horizontal velocity only. And this problem here, uh, this is the second type, and this is the uh, kind of the intermediate type of problem. This is when we have a projectile launching at a velocity at an angle, um, and it falls at a spot somewhere um, at the same vertical. Uh, height where it was launched. So uh, for this problem what you'll see here is um, uh, there is a range and the range uh, here is a bit different than what it would be in mathematics. The range is, is the distance between the launch point and the point where the projectile hits the floor. Um, and the maximum height uh, that's equivalent to the uh, y coordinate of the vertex uh, because this is a parabola as well. Now what you'll see with the velocity, it's shown as a vi, and there's an angle. So we'll, we'll talk about how to calculate the vix, the initial horizontal velocity, and the viy, the initial vertical velocity. But oftentimes you'll be given these problems uh, with just a, uh, uh, an initial velocity and an angle, so you'll have to calculate those. And to do that, it's pretty simple. Um, you can see that it's a right angle triangle. So the vix would be equal to uh, vi cosine of theta, and that would span the vi, the initial velocity, and the x uh, uh, coordinate, or in the x uh, component. Uh, and the vi y would be vi sine of theta, that spans the vi in the vertical component. So that tells you the horizontal and vertical components of that angled initial velocity. Now there are three formulas, and we won't go through the derivation for these, but uh, these are formulas that you can use for projectile motion when we have an object that is launched and lands at the same level uh, from which it was launched. And these are on your formula sheet. You may want to copy them down a bit um, into your notes, but range uh, is given there. It's v squared sine 2 theta over g. The maximum height is v sine theta, that squared, divided by 2g. And the time of flight is 2v sine theta over g. So let's look at solving this problem. Um, and uh, I, I won't show you how to do this calculation because it's actually just using the equation. So try this out on your calculator. We have a soccer player kicking a ball at a 40 degree angle. Initial velocity is 9.4 meters per second. Try to determine the time of flight using that time uh, a flight equation and you should get 1.2. Same problem, try to find the range. Use the equation, substitute, you should get 9.8. And again the maximum height, um, that is another equation that uh, simple plugging into the equation. So use the equation and you should get 1.9. So this here, again, another question I won't work out, but I'll just talk through it. Um, so if we uh, uh, alter the range, maximum height, and time, and we, uh, um, or rather, if we double the velocity, what effect does that have on the range, maximum height, and time? So just looking at the equation, anything that is squared, if we double something, it's going to be doubled twice. So anything that's squared uh, will be quadrupled, so multiply by 4. So the range would multiply by 4 the height will multiply by 4. The time would only double because we just changed the velocity by 2 and there's no square there so it would just be multiplied by 2. Now the more complex problem, this is the third type of problem, is when we have an object that is launched um, at, a, at a height and it falls at a lower height. So for this type of problem, um, the reason why this is more difficult is we actually we have to solve the quadratic uh, we, we have a t squared term and we'll have a t term. And that makes the, um, uh, uh, the equation a bit more difficult to solve. Uh, but uh, you can always use the quadratic formula, which you should have memorized, um, or you can use some other methods to figure that out. So I will go through uh, one method, and uh, you can try, to try some of your own. You'll, you'll, I'm sure you'll pick this up when you practice these types of problems. But here's the problem we're going to try. It says a rock is thrown from a cliff edge 
Um, the cliff is 50 meters, sorry, 30 meters high. The initial velocity is 20 meters per second and the angle is 50 degrees. So to find the rock's initial velocity components, um, that's pretty simple. It's just 20 times cosine of 50 to get 13 meters per second, 20 sine of 50 to get 15 meters per second. But when we are doing this calculation, we're going to have to take the more accurate values. We can't use those rounded values. And I'll show you that on the paper. So now with this problem, if we were trying to find the, uh, um, if you look at that next slide, it asks to find how far from the base of the cliff does the rock land. And with this, we, um, we really have to look at uh, our givens in the y direction only to start. So the, we're, we're trying to find out when will the object fall 30 meters down. So we have minus 30 as our dy. Our velocity will be up, and it's going to be 20 sine of 50 degrees. Uh, we know our g, of course, is going to be negative 9.8. I'm uh, sorry, I should have put meters per second, meters per second squared. Uh, but we're trying to find our time. And to do this, this is the equation we would use. d equals vit plus a t squared over 2. Now what makes this more difficult, our easy type of problem, we'd scratch this term out because our vi was 0. In this case we have a vi that's non-zero. So if we substitute everything in, uh, I have 20 sine of 50 degrees t plus 9.8, oh, sorry that's negative 9.8 over 2 t squared now I'm going to uh, write this with everything on the right side of the equation. And I'm going to write it uh, with my terms, my most significant terms up front. So negative 9.8 t, or over 2 t squared, plus 20 sine 50 degrees of t, plus 30. Now one thing that you might know, uh, we can multiply everything by negative 1, Turn this into 9.8 divided by 2 is going to be 4.9 t squared. I'm going to keep this as sine 50 because if I enter it in my calculator like that, it will keep all the information. And sorry, uh, this is supposed to be minus, and this is minus 30. Now I have to put this into a, uh, a calculator to calculate this. And um, I'll do that and come back with the answer, and I'll show you what we can do. So what I've written here is um, the quadratic equation. So my t is going to be minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And it's a good idea to just write this out so that you're putting in the correct values. My a is going to be 4.9. My b is going to be minus 20 sine 50. My c is going to be minus 30. When I substitute those values in, I end up with t equals minus this would just be positive. So 20 sine 50 degrees plus minus. This means I'm going to have to put this in my calculator twice, where I'll switch the from plus the first time, then minus the second time. Uh, square root of 20 cosine of 50 degrees squared minus 4 times 4.9, oops, ran out of space here, times 30. Um, this entire thing divided by 2 times 4.9. Now I'll end up with two answers. So as a set, this would be uh, 4.49 seconds and minus 1.36 seconds. You'll have to just report the one that's correct. So there, we can't, we're not going to use the negative time. We're not interested in that. So it's 4.5 seconds. That's my time of flight. And then I was asked, um, what's the range going to be? So to find the range, I go back to um, uh, my velocity equals distance over time. So my d equals vt. In this case, my v is going to be um, 20 cosine of 50 degrees. And my t is the 4.49. You're going to use the exact value, even though in this case it won't matter as much. But using that exact value um, will give me, let's see here, 
uh, about 5, 7.7, 7, and I had two significant digits to worry about, so that's going to be 58 meters. So my range, 58, my time of flight, 4.5. Practice these problems because they will be difficult.